As certain as death and taxes, we are told the meek will definitely inherit the earth. Perhaps, but not always. Consider, if you will, Mr. Archie Lochner, a well-known petty crook, sidebar six-for-fiver Shylock, registered coward, and owner of a yellow streak so vivid it could be slathered on a hot dog. Mr. Lochner was written out of the will when the meek were guaranteed their inheritance. And just now, he's trying to avoid another kind of payoff, a soulful payoff in that off-track betting parlor we call the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Seize your flight, you four flushing piss <laughs> This is the second most ill advised action you have ever taken, Marky Lochner, you miserable garment of human meat. The first was trying to make a bargain that would outwit me. I'm 32,000 years old, you human virus. Even among my peers in the fourth canonic order of demons, I'm considered a truly ghastly dinner companion. Did I mention I enjoy sucking the marrow from the living bones of idiots like you? Whatever made you think you could outwit the magnificence of Volker? I still got two days. The contract ended up for two days. Why is it you're tormenting me? Because I'm a demon, you imbecile. I don't send singing telegrams. I torment. It's what I do. That's why I'm called a demon instead of the Easter Bunny. Two days. You made the deal. You don't bug me for two days. Bug you. <laughs> bug you. Two days from now, I'll remember you mentioned bugs. Perhaps I'll turn you into one. A small, black, crawling bug, not unlike the kind I spear with a claw, crack like a nutshell, and feed to my serpent mate, Diptha. She loves to be bugged. Head, Mr. Lancaster, sir. I perceive that you must be seriously deranged to burst in here unannounced, Archie, with half my boys looking for you. That is, unless you have secreted somewhere on your scrofulous body the $165,000, including today's interest at 750%, that you have owed me for three months, three weeks, and uh, four days. You've got to protect me, Mr. Lancaster. I can do that, sir. I can twist off his head for you, Mr. Lancaster, sir. Sit, Bork. You know, before we have Gus and Bork reduce him to his component parts for shipment, would you be interested in hearing his tale of woe? Calmly now, Arky. Tell us what seems to have unhinged you. Ha, ha. Mm. Ha, the, uh, the 165 Gs I got loaned from you, ha. Uh, you know, um, I, I needed it because I, uh, I had to make this kind of deal with this, uh, this demon. It, it, this, uh, this, this thing with big teeth, he calls himself Volkerbs. <laughs> A supernatural being. Yeah, 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 you got it. A creature of Stygian darkness, a denizen of the nether reaches, a monster from some nameless plane of witchcraft and horror. Yeah, you got it. Bork. Twist his head off. Look, look, I, I, I ain't making it up, Mr. Lancaster. Honest, I ain't making this up. That thing's after me. He's right out there in the alley. Go on. Huh, huh. Mm. Well, we made this kind of deal, huh, me and this Volker. Huh. See, he gives me all the winners at Pimlico, Aqueduct, Santa Anita, Hawthorne, uh, Liberty Bell, and Maywood. All in the same day. See? In exchange for? Uh, first refusal option on 51% of my immortal soul. Things must be worse in hell than we know. Your soul's got to be pretty grungy and soiled, kid. Ah, uh, they said good help was hard to come by. He mentioned doing windows and floors. What do I know? Then you'd be able to pay me back in full. 
including the crippling interest rate, and you'd finally manage to extricate yourself from the nasty, brutish life that distinguishes you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, that's how I suppose it will be. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, and pigs will fly, eh? <laughs> I mean, he gave me all the winners, all right, 20, 30, 42 of them. And I bet them all, and they won, each and every one of them. He <laughs> said... <laughs> A few of them they had strokes and they died as they crossed the finish line. And a bunch of them got disqualified because it was full of dope. And 11 of them got scratched for bumping in the stretch. And on and on and on like that. Oh, sure. They all came in first, all right. And I lost every cent I got for you, Mr. Lancaster. And that's why I've been ducking your collectors. And that's why this Mr. Volkups is going to come and take me away and eat me if you don't protect me. Why should I bother, even allowing that this fantasy has a basis in fact? Well, $165,000 plus the interest for four months, including next week. Hmm. Miss Thorne is my accountant, Doc. She makes a strong case for your continued existence, despite its truly distinguished wretchedness. Then you believe me? I believe that I believe you believe it. most powerful underworld figure in this great metropolis, I have managed to make cohesive sense of the rackets. Now I grow bored. Ennui fills my days and nights. <laughs> Save for the joys of my association with Miss Thorne, of course. You've bought yourself a momentary reprieve through dint of sheer imagination, Arky. I won't have Gus and Bork dissect you. I will assist you. Already I feel heroic. <laughs> now tell me, how did you even go about locating a demon in these conservative climes? Uh, well, this is a um, woman I heard about. Uh, supposed to have a strong in with the netherworld. Uh, I visited a couple of times. She set it up. I think she gets a commission. I suggest we pay her a visit. Gus, the car off you, please. Try to hurry, dear. We have dinner with the mayor tonight. Mm -hmm. You are the impressive Cassandra Fishbein, trafficker in the black arts. I'm a beautician, beauty technician, and cosmetologist. I got a license. Miss Fishbein, my name is Nino Lancaster. I'm a business associate of Mr. Lochner here. He advises me you served as a go-between, a menuensis, a micus curiae, for him and a um, personage named Valkerps. I am calling a cop. Probably not. Very likely in my employ in any case. I ask your assistance voluntarily. Or perhaps I could ask my employee, Mr. Chaucer, to persuade you. Hey, who the hell are you? Look, I'm just a poor businesswoman trying to make an honest buck in a world of kids hot for purple hair and shaved heads. Ah, yes, business. Have you ever considered the range of unexpected tragedies that could befall an unwary coiffuse? whose insurance premiums, no matter how exorbitant, would not cover the mysterious mixing of DDT with her shampoos. All the inconvenience resulting from, perhaps, all of a sudden, the truckers who schlep said wares from the distributors decide they've lost the bills of lading, and said goods wind up in Beirut, or the constituted authorities suddenly get it into their heads to toss the businesswoman's apartment for illegal and noxious substances which would, I'm sure, result in said authorities discovering nickel bags of such vegetation and powders stuck down in the pillows of a sofa? Pardon my complex syntax, but I imagine you get my drift. Well, yeah, I set it up for this guy, but I'm just sort of a clearinghouse for a select few demons and soul traders of a very high quality. There's this quota of souls they have to make each year just to stay in good with the boss, and I'm sort of a canvasser, a scout, to steer likely prospects. Excellent. Here, you will set up a meeting with Mr. Volkerbs for us. Oh, put me down. When? Dare you, you, 
Now. You're out of your mind. This Volkerps has a very ugly personality. He think I'd turn him. Are you trying to get me snuffed? Have you ever considered how cold and uncomfortable it is being hung upside down on a meat hook in a freezer? By all the marges of Solomon's court, by the three-eyed moon of Astaroth, I call thee, Volkerbs, to come forth. Cassandra, I smell betrayal. No, honestly, they made me call you. Get them. Do it, almighty Volkerbs. Waste them. First things first, Cassandra. The little rat human, he has two days. But you... <laughs> <laughs> Next. and make sure that none of the boys try to take over the territory. Are you crazy? That thing's gonna fry us and eat us! It's coming! Who's there? Nino, open up. Are you alone? I said open the door, now. Obviously. Well, is your body burned? Hey, get away! Get away. This is going to be a little more difficult than I thought. How doomed! If you can't take him, what chance have I got? I didn't say it was impossible. I said it was going to be a little more difficult than at first I thought. Well, how'd you get away? I dazzled him with fancy footwork. Okay, let's get to it. Gus, Bark, go see Nuncio at the docks. Have him talk to our people at the ship fitting operation. Get me a hundred gallons of lead paint. Uh, what color, boss? Doesn't matter. Well, it comes in battleship gray, you know, which is like your standard color. Maybe we can get him to mix up a special batch in some nice pastel. Quiet! I don't care what color. Get gray, get anything, but get me a hundred gallons with the highest lead content they can find. Then spray the inside of this office. Ceiling, floor, walls, windows, every inch of it, every corner. Then do it all over again. And when you're done, do it ten times more. While they're getting the paint, you keep an eye on Archie. I've got a long trip ahead of me. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just go and leave me here. Where are you going? Where's he going? Some things you don't want to know. Is this going to save me? I am not at the pinnacle of my profession for nothing, Archie. We have to wait till midnight. He'll come at midnight. Anybody who wants to go, 
Do it now. Not you, Arky. Here's looking at you, kid. One chance. What? Cancel the contract with Harky. Give him about a million dollars to make up for what he lost at the track. Go slide back to your pit, and I won't kick the crap out of you. <laughs> Hazel, the dog. Harky, the patch. <laughs> losing buzz, icor, and lovely slime. Oh! You lousy twerp. Enough is enough. Asmodia, Spellfegor, Beleal, and the Toad of Death. Suppress thyself! Suppress. Submit. Suppress. Get your miserable, ugly backside into the box, you twerp! You lousy punk! <laughs> I've had some uh, small experience in these matters. Is that how you got away from him in the beauty shop? Mm -hmm. He got me a little, but he couldn't get me very much. Huh. I'll get you. I'll rend you. I'll savage you. I'll shred you. I'll suck your bones dry as jacks. Listen, punk. You think you're the first slug from hell, all puffed up with hot air, who ever tried to muscle in on my operation? If you're wondering how I beat you, look around in there. Your small potatoes. Papa? Papa, what are you doing in here? You idiot. Oh, I know I shouldn't have left the family business in your inept claws. You're a fool. Like father, like son. You saved me. You saved me. Yeah, I saved you. Now all you gotta do is make a deal with me. <laughs> business, Arky. Is strictly business. Oh, Arky, Arky. Poor Mr. Lochner. In that magical, mystical, bookie parlor we call the Twilight Zone, there's an old, old, very old saying. 
Making a deal with a demon is seriously crazy, but making a deal with the master of demons, well, that's crazy as a soup sandwich.